Have you seen this letterboxed game from the New York Times? You try to use up all these letters by making words. Um, so let's see, RU, R-U-E. Well, we can go from the R to the U, but we can't go to the E because that's on the same side. So let's back up and try something else. How about T-E-S, T-E-S-T, T-E-S, T, we could do tested, E-D, so there's tested, and we enter, and now the next word has to start with a D because that's the last letter in tested. So this is the puzzle we're solving with a Python program. Um, the first step is to is to get the puzzle data. So to have a Python program, go to this web page and find these 12 letters. And for that, we'll use this. Here's a function called fetch that returns today's letters grouped by side with groups separated by spaces. So for example, UPO space XTS and so on. Here's, uh, we're calling requests.get and asking for the contents of uh, this web page. We use beautiful soup to help find what we're looking for. And there's a script. Um, there are a bunch of script tags in here. And the one that, whose text starts with window.getData is the one that contains the sides. Go and look at the web page if you want to see um, exactly where this data is. But uh, the program finds the script tag that the data is in and it looks in the right place. And using a, um, a slice here on a, a string, it extracts the, the data and then um, takes out the quotes changes the commas to spaces, and then you end up with something nice, all lowercase, 12 letters grouped, the four groups separated by spaces. Okay, so that's the program to get the data. And then let's look at the, the main program, uh, which the main module, which includes a letterboxed solver class. And here at the bottom, if we're running it, um, if we're running this module, then we instantiate a letterbox solver given these um, 12 letters. And then we say solve it multiple times and then print the solutions. So let's run this. And we see in the output here, letterbox solver is ready to solve this problem and it went to a list of over 58,000 words and found that just over a thousand of them are words that could go into uh, the puzzle. And then uh, we, we ran um, a, the solver a hundred times and we found 96 unique solutions. The solver uses some randomness so it's possible to produce the same solution more than once and so that's why we discard the the uh, duplicates so here's some examples um, and these are way better than what I would probably come up with on my own often I have to use five or six words to make it because I don't think of these long words okay what else do we want to look at here Um, let's um, go to the top. So here's the letterbox solver. Here's the constructor. And it prints the little message. And the, um, this formal parameter here, letter groups, is a string. It's the 12 letters in groups with spaces in between. And this line here creates a new instance variable called letters that's the 12 letters, but without the space. So it takes letter groups, the input, and just changes the spaces to empty strings, removes the spaces. And then we create this uh, field called words, which is one of these things. So we'll go and look at that in a bit. Words from letter groups. Actually, let's go now.
So now we're in the words class. And we've just uh, instantiated from this class using the letter groups. There are a couple of... Um, oh, I see the presentation mode doesn't include the pluses and minuses where you can um, hide some of the code. Anyway, let's skip over these two functions for a second and come down here. So well, I suppose also I could just go over the how the solver works here. Um, it, it goes through the dictionary words and builds a mapping from each letter to all the letters that may follow it. So for instance, in this puzzle, the letters that could follow R are everything but A, R, and I. Anything that's on one of the other sides. Find all words whose first letter matches the previous words last letter and sort them by the number of unique letters the word provides. So the best choice from the words that could work uh, may be the word who the word that provides the most unique letters that are needed at the moment. As you play the game, they change from white to black as you've used them. So the letters that are needed now are these white letters. And then randomly choose the next word using a triangular distribution favoring the words at the top of the list. Let's go back to words. So find paths is where it builds this dictionary of valid letter-to-letter -letter transitions. So it works like this. It makes this dictionary using this dictionary comprehension here. For each letter we create an element in the dictionary that takes us from that letter to the letters in the other groups. That's this. So now we've got the valid paths. Now we go and read everything from our words.txt file that's got the 58,000 plus words in it. And then we filter all words with this function word works and this gives us candidate words so a word works if for going through all the letters of the word there's a valid transition from the letter to the next letter now we have this list of candidate words and now for all of them we create word objects let's just go look at the word objects so here's the word class and the word has the text, and it has a set of the unique letters in the text, and then the number of unique letters in the text. And then the static method, it's kind of like a factory method, to create an instance. Okay, so back here, we're in words, in the init. And so now we have this data structure that's a list of these candidate words wrapped in these word objects. And we sort this list of word objects using the number of unique letters, which, just to remind you, is here. And we say reverse is true because we want, we want at the top those that provide the most unique letters. Okay, so that's the end of the words constructor. So let's see if we can get back to where we were when we called that, which is going to be right here. All right, we're back in the main.py, the letterbox solver class. Uh, okay, so you see we call solve multiple. Solve multiples here. So we seed the random number generator to to one so that if you run the program again and again you will get the same results. If you wanted different results each time you run given the same data you could remove this line. 
All right, and now we call the solve method on the solver 100 times or whatever num runs is equal to. So now we have 100 solutions. And now we want to find the, the length of the solution, how many letters are in the solution. So if a solution has three words, you sum the lengths of each of the three words. And that's what we're building here, lengths and solutions. And we're doing that so we can sort. Fewer letters is better. So those will be first. And then we print this message about how many unique solutions are found. And then we uh, throw away the lengths so we just have the solutions. So this is just a, a sequence of strings, the solutions, and then we return that. So that's solve multiple. And now let's look at solve, which is called by solve multiple. You see um, here. We'll come back to randomly choose word. When we call solve, we have to um, make a note of what letters we still need. And at the beginning, that's all the letters, all the 12. And we have an empty list of what words we've chosen to use. And first letter allows us to choose only words that start with a certain letter, but we don't use it the first time. Remember, when you, when you start the game, you can pick any letter. But for the second and subsequent times, the letter that it starts with has to be the letter that the previous word ended with. So that's what this is for. Then this loop just continues as long as we need letters. This will stop the game. The solution stops when enough uh, of the right words have been generated that change all these whites to black to use all these letters. Uh, well, in the words class, there's a best words for needed letters method that you give it what letters you need and it gives you the best words for that. And then we need to only find those words that connect to the previous word. So first time through when first letter is none, this is going to return true. It'll be included. All the, all the words will be included the first time. And then we randomly choose one of those words. And here's that code. And the way this works is it will choose from up to 20 words. And it uses a triangular distribution for a random number generation uh, from 0 to this high, which could be 20. And then the mode, which I would expect the zero would, would um, be best, but it doesn't produce the right results. So I've got a little note to myself to look into that. So the idea is you're randomly choosing one of the words, but you want to more frequently choose words closer to the top of the list. You want to make it more likely that you'll pick one of the, one of the best words. So that's what that does, and that takes us back to here. And um, this gives us the, the word that we're going to use, and then we append that to our selected words. And then we subtract from letters needed the, le the unique letters just provided by this word we chose. And then we set the first letter for the next word to equal the last letter from this word. And then that continues this loop. And then when the loop finishes, this returns selected words, which is our list of um, words that we chose, that it chose to solve the problem. OK, I think that's enough. Take a look at the code in more detail um, if you want to. Here's the readme again. and. We'll leave it there and I'll see you next time.